when you use technology in the right way, it's like having a personal assistant. He could be British, it could be an English woman, it could be... Um, yes. So, uh, Tiffany Foreman, without uh, further um, introductions, most of you know her as the Never Know Queen. Queen, we say, right? Never, never know. know. Yeah, I'm never going to use it. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I do never know. Tiffany has embraced technology and it helps her run her business. So I've asked her to share which apps, what programs, what systems she uses to help her business run. Can you guys hear me okay if I just talk loud? Yes. Um, yes. yes. All right, so I like to know what I'm going to do. Oh, is it better if I do it on there? Well, if it's not because I'm right by the okay, thing. Can you hold it? No. I can move this over. Okay, no. so the first thing we're going to start with is my personal schedule. Oh, that's okay. Um, like I guess up front I should tell you guys I'm a little bit of a nerd. So uh, all of this is on Evernote. I already typed it up. I'm actually screen sharing the Evernote. So you don't have to take a bunch of pictures or anything like that because I'm just going to share the whole bit with you and you'll be able to see the whole thing. Okay. Um, a lot of it is hyperlinked to other notes so that I didn't recopy and paste the whole thing into this training because then it would just make the note part of it, the word part of it, really long. Um, another side note that you need to know is that my husband lives in Missouri and I live in Virginia. We are 16 hours and 1,000 miles apart. Yay. We have two children. Yeah, I know, Margo. You're jealous. I know. Okay. So our kids have been raised within Pamper Chef. We did, I started Pamper Chef before I had children, so they've never known a life without it. Um, we've never had normal nine to fibers. Uh, my husband has been traveling for at least the last, um, I, at least a decade plus, and then this last two years when he got the promotion to St. Louis. Um, and then he went through a merger, we decided not to move with him. And it's funny because I said, what am I gonna do about my business? Like I can't make up, I'm gonna have to start all over to move to a new city. And so we kind of waited to see what would happen at the end of the school year when my team started to grow. And in the past year it has doubled. So um, I'm kind of glad I didn't move. But uh, we were making it work. So I had to have multiple systems in place to make this work. My children don't drive yet. So I am constantly in the car or trying to fit things in little pockets of time to make it work. I did work full time when they were really young and that was even a lot more ball juggling when you're wiping noses and bathing and all that stuff. So it's just different, I guess is what I say. I tell people all the time like, yes, you're busy. It's just a different kind of busy each step of the way. All right, so the first thing is I use an app called Cozy, C-O-Z-I. Um, everybody, and Linda uses it, everybody in our family has a color, and then I have a color that's called other, because I might be doing something for other people. Like, when my mom had cancer, she was in there always in that other bullet. So my husband can access the calendar, much like Google Calendar, can access it from anywhere and he can see it. I just like Cozy because it also has a shopping list in it, and so I have a master Sam's Club list, a master's Target list, a master grocery store list. And sometimes my children like to add things like Doritos, Oreos, and money to the list. Uh, and so I use that so when things are, when I know to go to the store, I need to be more efficient in the store. And I just look for the things that are unclicked that we ran out of. Um, I also use a paper calendar because I'm a nerd and I make my own. Um, so the very first time I think I was sitting next to Patty or Marie and I saw their planner pad was the first time. I made my own planner pad out of an Excel spreadsheet, copied it myself, threw it in a binder, and then I didn't use any of the pages in between. So I then changed this year, I did a little bit more modification, and I'll pass my planner around so that when I open it like this, I have a, this an, a month at the glance, and then I have some to-dos on the side, like things as a director that I want to make sure I'm doing weekly or monthly. Um, I went through and kind of made a master list, and I left room to add things, so if the month is different or whatever, but I um, just found this, I'm just now starting this, but it was to help me remember certain things too. Um, I have a really good memory, but not like, I have long-term good memory, but not short-term, so I can use that. Um, I also love spreadsheets, so I'm going to pass these around. I have a spreadsheet for cooking shows, a spreadsheet for virtual shows, a spreadsheet for new consultant tracking, and that also, with new consultants, I track like when I'm running their virtual, so things I need to do for their virtual on that. Um, if you'll notice that where it says my planner pad template, how it's a tiny CC, yeah. one of the things I use is tiny CC is you take a really long, obnoxious link and you go to tinycc.com and it converts it into something small. So if you've seen any of the um, recipe books that I put out there for everybody to use, 
all of them have long links and I convert them all to something that makes sense. So um, I use tiny CC, but I didn't put any examples there because you're gonna see lots as we go through. Another thing I started using is Sign Up Genius. Anybody ever be on PTO, PTA? Uh, a classroom mom, where mom showed me this website. So I started using this with my team. I block out times that I know I can definitely take coaching calls, and this forces me also to be at my desk. Um, so what I've been doing right now is I pick three or four days a week. I do 10, 11, 12, and one. It doesn't mean we talk for the full hour. It's just how I block it. Um, I also like to nap when that's over. So that's why um, I don't take calls after that. And then when shift two starts, anybody who has children, you know shift two starts at 3 p.m., 4 p.m., um, I then look at what those buckets of time are. So with right now with my team, uh, I'm sorry, with my kids being on, they are swimmers, and so um, one gets out of swim at five, one goes in at seven, and so I sit in the parking lot at the seven o'clock one, and I do calls in between there. But sometimes, like I have something else I have to do, so I don't schedule it. So I try to make, the sign up genius for like a week long, but here's an example of what like it looks like, if you guys can see that. All right, so like I put on here on Thursday, these are the spots that I have. I also have a sign up, I decided to add cooking shows in there so that they can come with me and sign up to come to a cooking show. And then um, they have that. So especially when I'm running certain programs like Director, X, uh, Director Bound or Six Weeks to Success, they're required to have a phone call with me once a week. And instead of trying to like go back and forth between text messages and uh, PMs and emails and all that, I say, here, you go to the link and you sign up and then I will call you. I have their number, but I always call them um, during that assigned time. Is that free to? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Can, you go, can you go back to the very first one? Yep. Can you go back to the first one? Can you put all these templates on? Yeah, I have it all. You don't have to type anything. You don't have to. I'm going to give you all of this. Okay. Thank you. This is all one note in Evernote. So, yeah. So just pay attention. Yeah, just listen. Just listen. Let's look with your eyes. Okay. All right. So, um, so some of my team, what they have done, and in these training calls, they'll actually put in the comment. You can add a comment when you sign up. They'll put director bound. I want to know more about fundraisers. I need to talk to you about my new recruit. And so it kind of gives me a heads up um, when I'm doing that. So that makes it nice too. All right, Google Forms. Who uses Google Forms? No. You ever filled out one? Yes. Then you use it. Okay. So with Google Forms, I use them for a couple things. A team survey. We were talking about that at lunch by default. Um, surveying your team, what they like best about your team training, what they don't like about your team training. You know, maybe what they want to get out of their business this year. Um, always when we introduce six weeks to success or director bound, we make them kind of go through and list like what their show schedule is currently, how many more shows do they want, how many recruits do they have, and it's just questions that they fill in. I, a lot of times, especially when we go into the six weeks part that you'll see in a minute, I um, you select the one that says long answer. So I purposely don't ask yes or no questions. Like say for the recruiting, I don't say do you have any recruit leads. It says, who are your recruit leads? List all the names. So then when I'm on the phone with them, I pull up that Google form and I can say, okay, how's it going with Sally? Okay, how's it going with Laura? How's it going with uh, Linda? And they just, they tell me about that. And because I also keep all my notes in Evernote, I'll show you that in a minute. All right, yeah. So once you go over the Google form with them, you know, for that, is that per month? Is that per coaching call? Is yes. That so I'll show you an example of a um, my notes with somebody. Okay. And then what you do with it after? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is kind of like what when you log into Google Forms, once you have a lot, it looks like this. So you have all these forms here. This is a drop down right here. So when I narrow it down to just forms that I have created, it's right there. You can also drop it down to any forms that have been shared with you. So when I'm doing six weeks of success, or director bound with another group of directors, they are in charge of creating their own week and then they share it with me so I have access to it. Uh, but Google Forms, you can, this is the link to the Google Forms. I miss like, when I go into my Google, you know, the URL at the top, when I start typing Google Forms, this is the one that always comes up because I'm going to it quite often. SendShare, how many of you are using SendShare or something like that? Okay, here are things that I do. I go through, if you're passing around my calendar, on one side it says, um, things to put in SendShare, everybody's birthdays. I am not good about remembering to send birthday cards, but I can run the report on Consultants Corner and put everybody's birthdays in and everybody's anniversaries in. And you can run, I think you can schedule in SendShare up to like six or nine months into the future. So you just gotta remember that as people add, you know, they can have a birthday. Um, so I just try to do that monthly. I do birthdays, I do anniversaries. 
Um, you can quickly Google images. I have Google images, like not Google, but Google images saved as a bookmark. And so I just go there and write happy birthday. And I'll, draw, I'll grab like five or six different ones so I'm not posting the exact same picture every time somebody has a birthday. Um, things I delegate out to my team. I've got posting that on your team page? Team page. Every birthday, every anniversary. So you're not tagging anyone on those? Because I do sometimes go in and edit it okay. or right. tag the picture. So in the picture, it has happy birthday to whoever. Yeah, the picture will say, no, I could do that. I'm not that detailed. So I just find a cute happy birthday picture and I post it. And in the words, I write happy birthday, Patty. Okay. And if I'm like sitting there when the, you know, it goes off, I'll go in real quick and hit edit at Patty so it tags okay. her. Or I'll just hit the picture and tag her whoever it is. All right, things I've delegated out that I was doing all of this and I was forgetting um, to go back in and like do the next week was Motivation Monday. So all of these, the Motivation Monday, Text Me Tuesday, Wahoo, or Wow Wednesday, Painful or Thirsty Thursday, um, Freedom Free or Fun Friday are all delegated out to, um, I do Tuesday, everybody, I have four other people doing the other days, and they are told to post it at 9.30 in the morning. So that we know that all that I can know that it's done because it's all in there. So I won't see it until it posts unless they're using the Facebook scheduler. Then I can kind of see that there's a pending one. But if they have it in their send share, it's just there. I also have someone else in charge of um, scheduling the coffee talk reminder. So they go over to coffee talk and grab the subject that's going to go that week, and she posts that on Friday. I have um, of the same four people. I have someone who does a greet by 15 reminder on the fifth. Somebody else on the 10th, and somebody else on the 15th. And then I post the results on the 16th. So I was afraid that people were only hearing my voice and being like, rah, 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 rah. so that's why I delegated all that out. And I actually planned all this at a meeting in, in the, um, around Thanksgiving. I asked a couple girls that were interested um, that they would like to be involved in the planning for the next year. They came over and I'm like, okay, who wants Monday? Okay, who wants Tuesday? Who wants Wednesday? And if I see something that one of you guys posts that I really like, I'll just copy and paste it to them and say, use this on Thursday, use this on Friday. But they've been really good at looking up their own content. It's fun for them. So, um, and we kind of, we usually use alliteration, so that's why it's Thankful Thursday and Wahoo Wednesday, and they usually hashtag it too, because we're nerds like that. Um, Canva, I use Canva right now more than any other, like, I was using PicMonkey. Um, that's easy, like, on your phone. I feel like PicMonkey is an easy app. I do not like Canva as an app on my phone. I always use Canva web-based. So here's an example of my team um, banner. So we kind of took a vote and decided that we did not want every single person's name and the organization on the banner. That was just too busy for us. So we do um, our we voted on our what our uh, mantra is going to be. It's our time to shine in two zero one nine. Um, our monthly goal, which I learned this last year at the retreat in York, Pennsylvania, was to set a recruiting goal and set a sales goal that I had never ever done before. And so I took that and we broke it down. Last year we met our annual sales goal by November and then we ended up at the end of the year it was a 30% increase because everybody knew what we were going for. And our last year, our, our recruiting goal, we'd only had 24 people the year before. So I'm like, well, let's just go for 60. That's five a month. Let's just see if we can get there. Well, we had 51. We didn't meet it, but we doubled it. So I was totally okay with that. Um, the blank, the gray hearts mean we don't have anybody signed yet this month, and then I turn them colors as we add people and I put their names in there. So every month, the recruiting like emblem is different. Um, so like next month, it might be shamrocks that are gray, and then I turn them green once somebody signs. Um, I always, when I do my weekly update, I'll update who's gone green, who has joined our team, what the organizational sales are. We are made up of three director teams right now, so I have that listed. And then I show them where we are in the progression of our recruiting goal and our sales goal. So I want that kind of like in their face, but not like shoved down their throat. So I just want them to know they are part of the team. Our, one of our mantras is every single person is an essential, essential piece of the puzzle. So um, we want to make sure that they realize that you know, they're helping, even though if they are the 150 consultant or the 200 every month, they're helping out. Also, it's great for a vision board for structure. So I have a paper, like you know, a three, um, a poster board that's like a foam three science thing. Um, what are they called? Presentation. Presentation board that has got my my current team, like what it looks like right now. We have the little we have little stars on there, and this is our vir virtual vision board for what we want it to look like. So they can see what it looks like right now, and then they can see it as it grows. Because a lot of times, I remember the very first conference I ever went to. I'm like, who are 
And like, who do they belong to? Like you, I don't, because we didn't see faces only at conference. And so I didn't know who belonged to who. So now we kind of have a visual that everybody can see who belongs to who. Zoom, who's using Zoom? Awesome, or something like it. Zoom, we have monthly, we, I'm sorry, we have, every Monday we have happy half hour. So because I'm gonna be here tonight, I've already delegated that out. Um, it's typically not recorded, it's at 8.30 every Monday. You bring your water, your milk, your wine, your whatever, and you just come to Zoom, and we just, the number is the same every single time, which I changed in Zoom to be my phone number, so they never have an excuse for not knowing the room oh, number. Yeah, you can change it and then make it static so it never, so every time you start a Zoom. Well, I have the same number, but I didn't know I could change my own. Like, oh. Yeah, you can change it to your phone number. Oh. So then that way, I mean, they're like, is that your phone number? And I'm like, it is, but it's also the Zoom room number. So yeah. it's as easy. Oh, All right. Is so, that at night? Yes, 8.30 p.m. at night um, every week. And it's actually, it's not every week. It's weeks we don't have team meetings. So I'm still seeing somebody every week, and they don't always all pop on. Sometimes I'm talking to myself. So I'll use that opportunity to record a video about something, and then if somebody does pop on, well, even if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, we still do it. You know, so I'm still there regardless if they pop on or not. But I do set a reminder so that it's in share today at 4.30, it will pop, like, don't forget to get on happy half hour. Yes, ma'am. How does that make you feel when nobody... There's a case, like, it's like, like, it's been probably only twice in 12 months that's happened. Um, I started it after the York, Pennsylvania retreat last year. They talked about a happy half hour, like picking a consistent day, whether it's Sunday nights or Monday nights, whatever you want. I just picked Monday nights. And um, so the, like, the one time that nobody showed up, I just said, here's how to do a booking slide. Because I don't think they knew what a booking slide was, maybe, but they didn't know how to present it. So I went into show mode. No issues. No issues. Issues. So never mind. Okay. No. So you record it because you say. I don't record. Now that one, when I was by myself, I did record it, but um, because you know, um, I wanted them to be able to see it. But I also, I'll tell you another thing I do with it. Um, is I don't record these to make the create the urgency. So like in January, I said, guys, tonight we're talking about taxes. Don't you know? I had more people on there because they wanted to know about taxes. So when I get back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a friend. This is my bullet point to remember what I'm doing when I come back. It's a friend, um, Facebook friends list. If you go on Facebook and you look at your friends, sometimes if you've ever created like a group of friends or whatever, um, if you just click the one that says friends, the ones that are at the very, very top are the people you interact with the most. Okay, I have, I don't know, over two, maybe 3,000 friends. So the list is long, okay? If you keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling, you're not seeing any of those people's um, feeds, okay? So the further you scroll down, like kind of just pick a spot and start looking at their feeds and just comment on one or two things. Then you'll trick the algorithms. And five words. We just Where's Marie? Five, so five words. You have to say yeah. five words. All right, so not just... Looks great. Right. right. It has to be. So that really yeah, looks you got great, it. Tiffany. Yes, right. like saying it all out. So keep scrolling down on that friend list. And another thing I've learned too is you know how Facebook notifies you that everybody's birth, like whose birthdays is that day? Don't go to their wall and post it. PM them. So when you PM them and then you go and hit them up with a booking or recruiting seed, they'll say, oh, well, at least last time we talked, it was off for my birthday. They won't just see recruiting seed after recruiting seed after recruiting seed or booking, 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 okay? And I don't, like, because I do have a large friend list, like, when it is my birthday, like, I get a notification that I've had, like, 422 people yeah. wish me happy birthday, and I can't even see them. Right. Like, Facebook does something to combine them. So send them a PM, okay? So that you can make, and I just say, I hope you have a great, I hope you have a fantastic, happy birthday, I hope you have a fantastic day. And then if they say thank you, maybe I'll, and I see something that they did, maybe I'll go back and comment later. Because I just want to plant that seed and keep watering it, nurturing it, for when I want to, like, maybe do the next step with them. Okay, recipe night, we have been, we have brought back. So we were not doing that for a really long time, and I've heard two schools of thought on this tonight, or why we've been here. I know some people do their team meetings virtually, and then do their recipe nights in person. We are doing it the opposite way. I want my team meeting in person because I want my high five line I, that we do for our team meetings. I want people there so I can pat them on the back. And our virtual, what we're doing is we're gonna rotate and they, um, someone is gonna go live through my Zoom account so that we can all watch because they're all scared to death to go live for the first time. So if they're in a safe environment 
and they do it, then that way we can help them right there in the Zoom meeting to do their recipe night. So they're teaching us, we're teaching them, and that's how we're gonna do recipe night this year. Um, our team meetings are recorded. So our team meeting, I do just like you're seeing now, my slides are right here. My team that is in the room can see the slides behind me. My team that is on Zoom can see the, the uh, screen share right there. So everybody sees it, I record it, and I upload it to YouTube. So um, there are times that I, like, I can remember that I did this one training in June this year. Then I can go back and say, if they ask me a question, go watch our team meeting in June of 18, and it has that in it. Um, so I always upload it because I also take um, like some brief notes for the team meeting, and I add the recording um, of the Zoom, which is a YouTube link, and a couple other things in there so they can go back and kind of see the notes and click on the recording. Um, we are also consistently doing director bound and six weeks mm -hmm. to success. I'm doing them with two different groups of directors. So I've got some synergy over here and I've got some synergy over here. And um, we took Jennifer Courtney's like, or whoever's six weeks, like however many years ago. And we've been running it for about three years every quarter. So I think I've got at least a dozen under my belt right now. And um, every time we do this, which I'll show you down here, is um, that person who's in charge of that week has to update the PowerPoint because sometimes things change. Um, so pictures that have been shared over and over again get blurry and I think that looks unprofessional so I have them change the pictures out. Um, they also post reminders throughout the week within the group to create interaction. They go live um, in the group to introduce themselves the week of the, whatever their week is. Um, they run the Zoom call. I have trust with these people so they have access to my Zoom and we all Zoom using one number since I pay for it so that they don't have to worry about why I don't have the free Zoom or whatever. And then um, we all create the Google Doc for the homework. And again, I told you like I want questions, uh, the answer boxes to be open-ended questions, not just did you complete the homework, yes or no. That does mean nothing. Okay, I want to know what you got out of the homework. What were the five wows you got out of listening to Michael Yokely talk about host coaching? All right, and then when I do their coaching call, um, we go through that again. Even though they've written it and I can read it, we still go over it because there are seeing things that will come out verbally that didn't come out in the written word so that we can go over that. Um, with our meetings, I finally have delegated this out. I used to do my meetings with two other directors for like seven years and we went through a breakup. <laughs> so um, I was like, okay, I don't really want to do this by myself. How am I going to get this going? So what we did is, um, right now, the planners are all got three sections, booking, selling, and recruiting. I do the beginning and I do the end, and I have the three sections in between planned for the entire year. So out of four people, somebody's always on vacation. But that's the on-call spot. So if somebody's kid is sick or they like had something they had to go out of town for, we have an extra person to always rotate in there, and it's not me. Because I'm cleaning my house, and I'm setting up stuff, and I don't want to have to do that on top of that. So we rotate that out. I made a cute little spreadsheet. We do a raffle bag at our team meeting. Um, that we sell raffle tickets. This it's a product bag, you know, because as directors we get all we get a bunch of stuff, and um, we sell tickets. And then what we use that money for is every year we have a cash for conference, which I'm going to talk about that below. We have an annual family meeting, which is always in August, conjunction with our fall launch. And then we have a pizza party in December when we do the um, trip reveal. So that money basically gets regurgitated back into them. Um, but it's a way to kind of get them excited about a product bag. It's kind of like the surprise boxes. You guys like surprise boxes, right? When you go to conference. Yeah. So we end up doing it at every meeting. And we have done this for years. And we just kept it going. I do a drawing for $10 for do and tell on my team page. Every single time they do something income producing, they have to hashtag it do and tell. And we started this. It started out very slow. But you guys, you know how they say, like, you've got to change your culture? And I was like, I don't know what that means. Um, and all of a sudden, I was like, well, let's just do this do and tell. Let's see how it goes. I went live from the baseball field and just said, hey, guys, we're going to do and tell. Hold my phone all Laura Polito style. I was like this. And did my video. And they started doing it. I booked a show. I submitted a show. I played with my products and went live. Anything like that. Stamping catalogs does not count. Um, but anything like that. Then what they do is from meeting to meeting, I have them tally their own do and tells. They put them, my daughter writes their tickets out, however many they got, we put them in a bucket, they draw it, and because they were on target with their business, they get a $10 target gift card. So we do that. We also do green by 15. If you saw on my banner, it says goal of 20. We did 15 all of last year. Now our goal is 20 consultants green by 15. Um, when they are green by 15, I give a cash prize. 
So the base of the cash prize is $25 for 20 people. Every consultant over the 20, I add $5. So at the January meeting, because December is a really easy to be green by the 15th, it was a $55 cash prize that somebody walked out with. So a lot of times I encourage them to put it back in their cash for conference envelope because then that way they have the cash when they get there. All right, so YouTube, um, you save your live videos. So right at the break, I showed Marna how to, if you saw us, we went live on the uh, climb page really quick. Um, if you go, after you go live, but before you hit share, there's a save button in the bottom left-hand corner. If you click that, I'm gonna put the screenshot in here because it hasn't loaded up yet. If you hit that, it goes to your camera roll. Okay, and it stays in your videos of your camera roll. Then you can upload that to YouTube. So if you want to save it, you have that there. Then it also uploads into your parties. And Facebook likes Facebook. So if you upload a video within a Facebook party, it's going to autoplay. Yeah. If you put in a YouTube link, it's not going to autoplay because Facebook doesn't like YouTube. It wants you to use its own stuff. So if you just upload a video, it will automatically play. So if any of you know Christina Bailey, she does a Why Not Wednesday. And she, she's here in Texas, she's outside San Antonio. And so she has like a whole library now of videos that she has done. She basically takes one night a month, usually after her team meeting when the house is clean, her makeup is on, her clothes are on, and she records four videos for the, for the month and she just changes her shirt every single video, okay? If you notice on my host coaching, when the host coaching tracker is going around, it says videos and it says pink, teal, and aqua. At the top, that's the color shirt I'm wearing in the video. So that I know on my camera roll what picture to pick. Okay, I, I mean it was one day. It was literally 10 minutes back to back. And you can text a video up to about two minutes. iPhone to iPhone is about two minutes. So all of my, my three host videos are less than two minutes. That was a trial and error thing, trying to figure out how long I could text. All right, I have a, I have a, um, on YouTube I have my own channel, so that means you have to have a login to YouTube. Um, you should subscribe to people like Patty because when they upload a video, just like when Pamper Chef uploads the video, it sends you an email. So I have my note, I have that set for weekly, so that weekly it tells me Matt Patty has uploaded six videos and Pamper Chef has uploaded this video. And so um, I'm gonna share you my channel, uh, but I upload all of my team trainings there, I upload all of my live videos there, um, and it's just a great place to go. And so I do try to segregate it out into playlists, Playlist is something that's within YouTube. So if it's a cooking show related, like it's something that I would want like a customer to go to, I have it in Tiffany Foreman, comma, you know, director of Paper Chef. If I have it and it's a training thing, I call it Tiffany's Training Tube. And I just put all the team meeting stuff, yeah. Do you have that open to the public or do yes. you have for it? Most um, my videos are open to the public. Now when it's six weeks of success or it's something kind of more sensitive, I'll, list, I'll do unlisted. Thank you. So that I only have, to, I can, whoever has the link can see it. But usually it's um, on, it's public for anybody to see. But I have played with that a little bit for sensitive information that I don't necessarily want. All right, cash for conference. So um, remember I told you that they can, um, that some of the money that goes into the product raffle is in there, but they can also send me money every single month. So when it's payday, not only do I post, hey, today's commission, pay, commission day, it's also pay, send me money for cash for conference. So that's one of my since year reminders that goes up on the 7th and the 21st um, to send me money. So um, when I do, I don't know, why are those not showing? Okay, so see this, this is actually the template of an envelope. At the top, it's the money they send me. So that way I can keep track of how much money they've sent me and it literally goes in an envelope. And then the bottom part is what they earn for recognition. Disregard that match PC buck thing. That was something we did a couple years ago and I don't even remember the details. But um, I gotta find a new template for this, but I just wanted to show this in here. This one, I don't know, let me hit the button and see if this works. All right, so this is what my um, team meeting stats card looks like. I used to be the consultant that would show up at a team meeting and my director would always do recognition like this. This person did six shows this month. Her top show was 752. She got six bookings. She had one new consultant join her team. Her total sales were um, $3,982. Come on down to any format. I'm like, oh wow, I, I didn't even know I did that. I had no clue what my numbers were. So I don't want my team to be like that. So what I make them do is yes, I have the report, but I also do have a lot of hospitality. We live in a military town, we have a lot coming and going, and I don't want to have to message all of you people and find out what their stats were. They need to be responsible for their own stats. So um, it's like, you know, when you raise children and you try to get them to be responsible. So they fill out the left. 
and they put all their stuff on there, and I read all of this just like I did there with their name being the last thing. So we make a big deal about a high five line. Um, we usually what we say is you don't get in the high five line until you have 750. Other than that, you're just a round of applause with our clappers. And um, then I total all the money up. They don't get that money unless they go to conference. I know some people pull all the money, and then whoever goes to conference, they get an equal share. I don't do equal shares. I do prorate it. So you, if you did more, you get more money than the person who only did 150. Okay, but you still get money. Everybody gets a dollar for being there, so presence counts. And then um, I give them all that money at conference, or if they wanted to come to this, like they wanted to come to a retreat with me, they can use the money for that. If they quit, I call it the quitters fund, and the quitters yeah. fund goes right back in the master envelope. So they don't get it when they quit. Okay. Um, and then what? Yes, tough love. I was always giving cash for conference, and I loved it when I was surprised at my exec banquet. Can we bring back exec banquet? I forgot about that. Um, and I just, I loved it, so I keep it going. Um, we also um, do what's called a BHAG board. You guys know what BHAG is? Yeah. Big, hairy, yeah. Big, hairy, audacious goal. So when I'm doing my new consultant um, coaching with them, I am trying to connect their why and I, can, I tell them that we can do this two ways. We can do it with how many shows you want to work or how many times in the month you want to work or how many dollars you want to make. And I'm going to transfer it back and forth by doing the math and figure out what your commission would be. So say they say, Tiffany, I only have time for four shows. I'm like, okay, well the company averages, I use 500 because with virtuals being four and cooking being six, we go 500 plus the math is easier. Um, so four shows times 500 is $2,000. $2, so I say, okay, your goal is $2,000. Now let's say you really stretched yourself, like in that month, how, many, how much do you think you could do? So everybody is different. Some people always say, well, I can do 2,500. And I don't think a $500 job, that's one extra party. But for them, that might be good, one extra party. Some of them are like, well, I'm going for that top free-for-all, so you know, put me at 3,000. And I'm like, well, every time the free-for-all comes around, there's usually a $3,000 level, so let's do it. This literally looks like a potty chart, guys. You guys ever do a potty chart for your kids? Okay, so when they go potty, they got a sticker. So this is what it looks like. These print four to a page. If the internet works with me, I'll be able to show you this. So it's this little thing right here, and I print it on color. So their name goes right here. Their goal goes here. Their BHAG goes here. And they literally get little stickers as they meet their BHAG. And we have it up on one big board. And they all like to see it. This also helps me figure out what the potential sales are in my organization. So if I know what everybody's goal is, I can then say, okay, well, if I add up all these 150s and these 3000s or whatever, I kind of have a feeling of what it can be. So even though their goal may change every month, we're looking at an average, okay? So that's just something fun we do at our team meetings. Another thing I do is consultant connection, um, and I go in, anybody look at that overview tab? I love the overview tab, especially when it updates on the 10th or roundabout. And you get to see who is two months, four months, and six months inactive. I got all these words from Marna Ross, who skipped out on my training. Um, and, where is she? She's, She's hiding. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know when or where this, these words were shared, but I'm like, I'm going to save those words in Nevernote because I am going to use it. So for example, here's my two months. Um, it's just, I'm sure I got these words from somebody else. These are not my original words. I've tweaked them over time because I have added, let me know when you get this. This line right here, send me a quick reply. So I have found that email is really easy to ignore because they always seem to sign up with a different email that they don't check. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't check that email. Then why did you use it for your paper chef stuff? So I've been sending this via text if I know I can get a read receipt or I'll send it via PM because then I can see that they have read it. So I do this for two, four, and six months. And then uh, and the wording is really, really similar in all of them, but this one is one of my... Um, the dropped list, we are not divorced. So I just tell them, thank you for being a consultant, uh, blah, 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 blah. You have some, you have some options, you know, have a show for me, um, bring me your leftover stuff that you're not going to use, and, um, you know, tell your customers to come to me too. And like, hopefully it's all good. I said, look, because we're not divorced, so let's make some lemonade out of this, okay? It's okay if you've decided to hang up the apron. 
but we don't want to, we are not divorced. You don't have to block me on Facebook because you decided you didn't want to be with Pamper Chuck anymore. Right. Yeah, so okay, so this is all in a notebook, and so here you can see in Evernote, you can put a group of things together in a notebook. Think about your trapper keeper when you're in elementary school, and you had like all your math notes in one place and all your social studies in one place. So I have all my consultant emails in one place, and here is the um, notebook. I'll, I'm going to give you guys this link because it's teen emails, real original. And then um, I have all these saved, so all I have to do is copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. It's all about um, not recreating the wheel, it's about painting it your own color, okay? I also do like paper for postcards, so I'm going to hand around my little postcard thing. So when somebody joins my team, you probably noticed on my little tracker sheet going around, it says send a welcome postcard, and it just wel says welcome to Formance Arts. I love Happy Mail, I love postcards. I mail a lot of postcards because I just like it. So I make them, I don't worry about going to Vista Print and you know, buying 10,000 of them to get the best deal. I just print them on cardstock. Um, you can usually, um, if it's four to a page, I can print them at home, or if I'm feeling savvy, I'll email them to Office Max and say, hey, just print me like 10 sheets of this, because 10 is gonna be 40 postcards. So I figured like, that's enough to get me through for you know a little bit. So I've got my team postcards in there, I've got my host coaching postcards in there, and then there's an example of the thank you, post, uh, thank you um, postcard that I sent. Because I sent a postcard that somebody, like, uh, when uh, consultants retire in my area, bags just show up on my front porch of, like, you know, bags and t-shirts and materials and catalogs from six years ago, you know, all that stuff. So I was digging through this one bag, and there was a postcard in there that she'd gotten on Vistaprint, and it just basically said, thank you for your order. So I was like, this is kind of a good idea, and it was a rainy day in summer, and so we were sitting around, and I wrote a thank you note to everybody on this one particular show. This lady had, had been, I think it was a booking of somebody who had used to been on my team, you know, like three or four degree separation. She lived in California on the West Coast. I'm all the way on the East Coast. She was the only order on that party. All right, the party didn't qualify. I'm on direct ship, so it was easy that went by. I sent this lady a thank you note. She has since had four parties with me, just booked her fifth party with me, all because I sent her one postcard. Okay, so the power of one, when they want us to like track the power of one, I call that the poo. So um, when you're tracking your poo, um, you, I, I always use Sherry as an example because she, and she, and I tracked my bookings and I've tracked my sales from her. So it was totally worth that one, whatever they are now, 35 cent post it. Okay. I also, um, like I said, I'm a big proponent of copy and paste. So I used to send a really long host email detailing out every single thing because I didn't want to talk to them on the phone. Okay, so now I send them, let me see if this comes up. I just copy and paste this, like I literally highlight this, and paste this into a email. And it just says, instead of one long email, I'm gonna break this up into sections. Make sure you click each section and see what it has. Uh, my favorite one is how to submit a guest order. So I, you know, they always text you, Susie wants to order a stone, but she wants to ship to her daughter, and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, here, you can enter it yourself. Um, so I send them the instructions <laughs> on how to enter it. <laughs> them to do it as it is for me to do it so I'm like and you have the credit card so they're like well I don't want to give you the credit card number okay well then just do it yourself <laughs> so um that, that happened today somebody texted me today my, my daughter wants a stone and I'm like you know it's safe and secure do this on the you, on the link yeah thank you Anthony. yeah so it just says here's what you're gonna need all that information put in the item numbers it looks like this in the cart you can, then you can, I think then it prompts you to sign in after you've added something to the cart. And then you review your payment, you review and submit. That's how you do an order. So if a guest, if a hostess says I collected these orders and they're on my desk at work, I'm like, okay, then you just enter them. Because if she wants to put them on her credit card, they're going to give me cash later. I don't accept checks because I'm not waiting for them to clear. Um, nobody's mailing me checks these days. So if it's somebody local who wanted to like drop a check over to my house, I would take it. But I'm not going out looking for these checks. So um, if they're a little old lady friend who wants to write them a check, but they want to put it on their card, you know, we can't run cards for over the amount. So if they want to use their card six times, well, then you can go ahead and type in the order. So I just let them do that. And then another, the other one that I really use a lot to the point where if you have an iPhone, I don't know if this works on Samsung, but you know how you can do shortcuts? Okay, so like, you know, it's defaulted to what? O-M-Y-W uh, on my web is like one of the default ones in there. I created one that says host dash. So when I write the words host dash, this entire link 
comes up. Wow. No way. Yes. Yep. Okay. So genius. I'll say, hey, don't forget to go on your host dash. And then what pops up is host dash slash uh, tinycc dash host dashboard. So yeah, you can put anything in there. I never thought about it. For I do the same thing. I do, um, like, you know, people say, what's your address? So if I do my Addy, like A-D-D-Y, my whole address comes up. If I did website, your personal website. Oh my god. I have one of that outside order. You know how it gets that you got an order? Yes. I type in O-O and it's like, thank you so much for your order on the website. Here is the recipe box. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yep. And then I so I have one. Okay, so does a, so I use um, my Addy for my personal. Like people are like, what's your address? Or something. I use that. If I use my initials, my email pops up. So people are like, what's your email? And then I use oh, when I write my web, it's one word. My entire website pops up. So. Those are all shortcuts within your iPhone. I feel bad yeah. for Cindy. Who's and yes. next to me. And so, yeah, I just don't know where it is in the Samsung. I know where it is, how to get to it in an iPhone. Um, okay, so, and then this one is my other favorite, is the host dashboard. This tells them step by step how to create, how to enter their order in the host dashboard. I cannot tell you the last time I entered a host order. I tell her, here are the steps, go put it in. I will check it when I get the email because that means you put in your payment and then I will make sure you have the best um, deal possible. And so I actually sent this, I think maybe to George. I had George review it for me. I'm like, hey, does this look about right? And he's like, yeah, that looks good. So it tells them like how to connect to their show, what little icon to click on. These are all screenshots, guys, that I drew an arrow on. And then I say, um, you know, you can enter. I don't use the guest list, list function, but if they wanted to, they could. I use Margo, so that's a whole other conversation. Um, and then it tells them when you click on um, the host rewards, that guy right there, this is what's going to pop up, and you get to see what your benefits are, and here's how to redeem them. You click that button, you click the cart, you click that button. You guys, I'm going to send this all to you so you don't have to take pictures. And then they can click. Do you want to make it that price? Click that right there. And then they put in their payment, and then I get this email. Don't you love this email? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes, so that means they've done it. Yes. So then I tell them, now I will check your host thing. Now, if they want to change it or we need to have a conversation, I hated this thing. When you'd be sitting at, you know, you're on there and this is what you hear on the phone. You're flipping the catalog. Can I get item number? I don't know. I don't have time for that. Okay, this is like where I'm sitting in a carpool line. Are you going to upload this to the training? Yep, it's all together, all links. It's hilarious. Okay? Um, and it's funny because I think, you know, one day I'm going to piss somebody off. Somebody's going to be like, I don't like her. She makes me do everything. Well, that, yeah. or they're going to be like, she's so easy to deal with. That's what I hear more often, so I'm going to go with yes, that. That's what I'm right. so I like, she has the best show. She makes it so easy. Yes. And I'm like, because they don't have time. You know, the ones that say, well, I don't have time to host a party. Well, I guess you don't have time to put in your host order either. So, um, so I do the same email for virtuals. It's slightly different for a person. Do you guys use the voice recording thing on your phone? Oh. All right, so let's say I wanted to message someone who has an iPhone. I'm going to send a message to my husband. Hey, honey, I love you. All right, so it records it, like not the, the words, but oh, the actual yeah. voice. Yeah. Okay, it's the voice. So I'll just send that. He's going to know I'm lying. Uh, so I see. <laughs> wait, wait, so you go into texting first? Yes. Okay. So you're in Hold text. Up. All right. All right, and the little oh, microphone. So on your see your message, the little microphone that's yeah. right there, that does your physical voice. What is it? What is it? Yeah, so like right now. Look. No, that's the other one that types it out. This sends them a voice message on texting. Yeah, so yes. this is going to send them a voice recording. What phone do you have? No, no, no. What phone do you have? She may not have it. Doing it? Trying it out? Did it work? There you go. So you yeah, she may not have it. I can't do it to a Samsung phone do it to a iPhone. So can you go Samsung to Samsung? So, yeah, you can go within your own phone. You can't cross the line. Like, I can't. If it's a, I, I can do iPhone to iPhone, but I can't do this to you on your phone. I can do it to you on Facebook. Here. How do you know when you're... I can't, I can't, hold on guys, I can't hear Sue. Um, how do you know, like, let's say you've entered their cell phone from a show where they've entered their cell phone as a show. They, how do I know if it's a Samsung or an iPhone? Okay, if it turns blue, it's a, it's a, an iPhone. If it turns green, it's a not an iPhone. Say that again. In an iPhone, if the number is blue, it is an iPhone. Yeah. 
If the number is green, it is not an iPhone. It's iMessage versus non iMessage. Yeah. So the same thing, your text messages are different color too. It's not just the phone number, it's the actual messages within the body. I got I got them all uploaded too. I haven't used it. All right, so you can do the same thing for Facebook. You guys know that you can do that in Facebook? Pop up in your messenger. Yeah. I think Samsung that corners did it. I think we can do voice memos. Yeah, I But it's not the same as a voice message where you don't have to use another application. So how did you get there again? All right, so I said, we're sitting in the like that. I know, right, so I, I, know, I, know, I 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 know, Oh, yeah. I'm going to get to that. Oh, I just wanted to. Oh, yeah, down there. Okay. So the other way, I just want to make sure you guys know you can do this on Facebook, too. So you know how Becca was saying something about, like, their tone or, like, you know, how to infer? Um, you know, sometimes if a conversation goes sideways, um, nobody's ever had that, right? Okay, so when you're on Facebook and you go into Messenger, there's a bunch of little icons at the bottom of the Messenger. So one of them is pictures. Yeah. And then one of them is a microphone. So do you guys see that? That is for you to do the exact same thing. So when I'm in a car and I can't send you the step-by-step -step instructions, I can just hit that and say, do this, and rattle off what I wanted to do. Okay? All right, so we all coming back together? Okay. All right, so another thing I use is I use PayPal, Venmo, Apple Pay, and Facebook Pay. Did you know there were all these options to collect money from people? So I tend to use um, PayPal the most, like when I'm interacting with my team. Um, the reasons I do that is because we do a group supply order that also gets their butts at the team meeting when I say I will order your supplies for you. Okay, so I I order their supplies, my team. So that they don't have to pay. So then they we we get, I make sure, I try to get to a $200 order. So then the shipping is what four percent. Or eight percent, so whatever the. Trying to get the cheapest, even if I have to pay thirteen, it's usually cheaper. So like just with the new season starting over, I ordered two hundred catalogs. I ordered you know nineteen things of mini catalogs and all that. Now what I also do is I allow them to only buy twenty five of my two hundred from me at the hundred dollar rate. Right. So they're not paying the extra if they only needed one. So then I line it all up on my floor when they get there. I make my children do this. I line it all up on the floor when they come to the team meeting, and then they pick it all up. So then that entices them, well, I gotta get my supplies, so I gotta go to the team meeting, right? So it's all there. And then that's how customers send me. Um, I don't know if you know this, but Venmo and PayPal are now the same company, one owns the other. Um, but they're separate apps. So there's. Yeah, so I mean, there's tons of ones out there. I use um, the other day at a show um, because I have an Apple. Um, a customer sent me right there in the room. I said, oh, your total is 32. And before I could say anything, she already sent me Apple Pay. And yeah. I had never accepted an Apple Pay before. Love Apple Pay. It was so easy. Okay. So and then easy. when I'm sitting at Starbucks, I just go, and they pay for my Apple Pay right. Starbucks. And it just it's just transferring money from one spot to another. Same thing as Facebook Pay. So back in Messenger, where you had the picture, or take a picture, uh, input a picture or input a message. If you hit the four little dots, it gives you a bunch of other options. Okay, so you can scroll across to payments and you can request money from someone. I will tell you this because I got kicked off of it two years ago and they won't let me back on. There is such a thing as using it too much. Okay, it's collecting too much. Collecting money. too much money. Correct. Okay, so when I do that, it's usually not very often. <laughs> 
Right. Well, that's the problem. Is I was using it for my freezer meal workshop payments oh, and things yes. like that. So they thought you were that, doing some crazy yeah, stuff. Just businessing it up. Yeah. And you because you're not according to the rules, you are not supposed to use it for business. It's so, just like if you and I go out to dinner, you owe me right, the bill. It's right. fourteen bucks. So fourteen bucks. Just a heads up. And they have not released me from it yet. <laughs> wow. I have messaged them like because I would like to give them money, yes. you know, to boost my ads, and they, they won't. won't. They they won't okay. do it. So just so be if careful. you yeah, just I don't do it a whole lot. I can't, most of the time, it's my team's paying my team paying me for supplies. Right. When I right. prorate it out. It tells you when you get on. Like I've never done it, and I just got on. And it says you can pay a thousand seven hundred and fifty friends. So it tells you at least mine does. It says that's probably because of how many friends you have. <laughs> um, but you can hit payment, so you can hit like that you, that you want to send money or you want to request money, and then when they send me, the, then the request will expire after so many days, you'll get an email that says this, like say they paid you a different way, and it just sits kind of out there, um, and when I get it, I hit accept, and then I tell it where to go, so usually I just say just go into my PayPal, because I'm going to end up having to PayPal somebody else later, so I usually keep a balance in my PayPal or whatever. Um, another thing I know people do is they have albums on their phones and they keep some standard pictures on their phone. So if you wanted to send somebody that message, personal message that said happy birthday, you would have the pictures in your album already on your phone. Just note that when you have an iPhone, I don't know how Samsung works, um, that if, the, if you move a picture to an album, it stays in your main camera roll. And so it, it, it's like duplicated almost. So even though it's not, I don't think it's taking up the space, it's just kind of putting it in the two places. Right. What? Not ours. Not Samsung, yeah. Right. So yeah. You take it out of your camera roll. And, and you put it in an album. album. It's, it's, it's it, yes. Like, so that would be really nice if Apple did that. They don't do that. But you can do that with, um, like I keep all, like, you know, the next three months with the host specials and guest specials in there because, you know, I'm constantly texting them to people. Um, and so same things like with the promotions that are going on. And then um, I do use Siri and Alexa at times. Um, I tell Alexa to set timers for me so that I don't like forget what I'm doing. I'm severely ADD. So um, if you saw my post the other day, I let the bubble waffles burn because I sat down for two minutes and I totally forgot about them in that two minutes. So you gotta set Alexa or your Siri. And then um, Siri, you can or with Alexa because I have Cozy hooked to Google and Google hooked to Siri uh, to Alexa. I can say Alexa, review my schedule, and she'll list out everything that I have typed in. That I was supposed to do today. So if I had put in their coaching call with, with you know, Tennille, and I can say, what's on my agenda? And then she'll say, at 11 o'clock, you have a coaching call with Tennille. Oh, okay. So I didn't need to go look at anything. She already just told me. So I, I have your number saved, so I would just call you. Now yes. you have a justification to get an Alexa. Now you can justify getting an Alexa and write her off. Like, so, all right, now I'm ready for any questions. Oh, yes. Are those in the documents that Yes, so I have a link called Post Postcards and a link called uh, Team Postcards. And they're in there. They're nothing fancy. I got them from somebody else who got them from, what was that one before Meryl? Nancy's artwork. Nancy's artwork. Okay, so those were like Nancy's artwork that she had screenshot, and I've just changed it like this much. Yes. Do, they, do you send those in the envelope or you just send them like a postcard? I send them like a postcard. Unless I'm sending them something else, then I will go ahead and not send those. However, when um, when a brand new consultant starts, that is always a postcard. I want them to get that immediately. When a consultant um, joins our team, by the time the first meeting rolls around, if they weren't there, we do present them with a, a skeleton key with a postcard that says it's a key to your business, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I guess I have a picture of that too. Um, and so with that, that um, I do have to mail that, but I don't mail them together because I want them to get the welcome postcard by itself, and then I do all the keys for people who are not physically there at one time. So I usually put them in a, an envelope with the postcard and the key. Um, let me think of what it was called. Um, so this is my Evernote that you guys are seeing on the screen now. So I have tons of um, notebooks and stuff. Um, let me think. Let me just do this. Yeah, they're just, I mean, there's basically like, um, Evernote's a whole different discussion. I didn't want to bore you guys with Evernote for those of you who don't use it. Um, and so, it's just easier for me. Come on. I'm trying to, get, this is not responding to me. Here, pass that on to somebody. Oh, I think it's 
my key to my business. I want to say it is, oh, it's in my recognition. That's where it is. So I have all my recognition typed up too. God bless you. <laughs> oh, there's the cash, or cash What time is the All right, so here's, the, here's what how our postcard started out. It looked like this. And they got a little skeleton key. We then updated the words a little bit, and I had a, uh, a friend, a girl on my team was a printer. She works for a print shop. So she made this for me. And then this is, it's a little bit updated wording. Because uh, we just changed a few things. And then um, the keys are on Amazon, and you get like a lot of them. You get 30 keys for $8. They look like that. Oh my gosh. Wait, say that again. $8. $8 because you have 30 keys, they look like that. They're in a little teeny Ziploc baggie. And you can get them at Walmart too. Done yeah, I, like in a, we used to always go to Home Depot and you would buy them. They were like 99 cents, you got two, or $1.99, you got two, they were gold. And then we just, we were always running to Home Depot or somebody, they would run out. They'd only have like six packs at this yeah. point. So, so I just went and I was like, you know, I Amazon everything anyway. Right. So I'm just going to Amazon something else. And the card, your, your, Hmm? Yeah, so like when we, especially when we edited the words, because I had gotten the words originally from somebody else. So the, like, I think I've got these words copied and pasted. So if you wanted to copy and paste them into uh, Vista Print or something, you could do that. Or if you want to do four to a page, you could definitely do that. So you didn't share that with us too? Yeah, this whole document I'll just share with you guys. And if there's anything I miss, I'll just share, because everything's in Evernote for me. The one thing with Evernote is I was sick of having to, like if somebody messaged me in the middle of the day and said, can you um, send me the host special or the guest special or how to do this or how to do that or do you have a recipe, blah, blah, blah. I'd have to wait till I got home, then make sure children were occupied and then get sit down at my computer and it was just, it weighed on me to have to do that. And so now I can be at a stoplight and say, oh, you need a recipe to the barbecue chicken sammies? Okay, so let me just get that. So that's why I also have my recipes broken down into all my recipes. I give all my customers access to all these recipes. I guess there's 354 in there. And then the ones I break down in the station style are in there too. So I give my team access to that one if they wanted to just pull a recipe off because I do all station style cooking shows. Yeah, I don't, yeah when I do cooking shows, they're station style. When I do virtual, they're virtual. Thank you. Wow. Okay, so I know that you guys probably um, need a little bit of a break. So stand up. I 